Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Dr. Tabati's presentation, myself Dr. Tabati Banjati. Today, topic of the presentation is starch converting enzymes. I am going to discuss about application of enzymes in starch industry. Already you know that enzymes are biocatalysts produced by living cells to speed up specific biochemical reactions by lowering the activation energy barrier. They have been the center of attention for researchers or industrialists worldwide due to their wide range of physiological, analytical and industrial applications. The practical application and industrial use of enzymes to accomplish certain reactions apart from the cell dates back many centuries and was practiced long before the nature or function of enzymes was understood. A very important field in which enzymes have proved to be of great value over the last few decades is the starch industry. Starch is a major energy compound of many economically important crops such as wheat, rice, maize, tapioca, potato, etc. Besides, as a versatile raw material, it has been used in a variety of industrial applications and has a great impact on the world economics. Starch is usually composed of two types of molecules, namely amylose and amylopectin. They, uh, they both consist of polymers of alpha D glucose units in their chair conformation. That means basic unit of amylose and amylopectin is alpha D glucose. Amylose is unbranched single chain polymer of about 500 to 2000 glucose subunits with only alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Fair is in case of amylopectin, it is actually branched both 1,4 glycosidic bonds and alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkages present in amylopectin. The degree of branching is approximately 1 per 25 glucose units in the unbranched segments of amylopectin. Amylose exists mainly in amorphous form, form, whereas amylopectin forms the crystalline component. So these are the basic differences between amylose and amylopectin. First picture is showing amylose, that means it is unbranched single chain polymer of glucose where you can see alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage present. Where is, if you see second picture, this is actually amylopectin where alpha 1,4 link is present as well as alpha 1, uh, alpha 1, 6 glycosidic linkage present. Glycogen is another closely related compound functioning as the glucose storage in animal cells which has one branching per 12 glucose units. That means it has similarity with amylopectin. It is actually branched both alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds and alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds present. And already I told you okay, it has a one branching per 12 glucose subunits. So more branchy present in glycogen as compared to amylopectin and it is basically present in animal cell as storage compound. In this figure also it is clearly shown that in case of amylose only alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage is present. In case of amylopectin both alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkages as well as alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage is present. That means branching point present in case of amylopectin. In the full view of amylopectin, you can see that there are mainly three uh, branching points. This is one branching point, then another branching point is here, and then third branching point present here. Branching point means mainly that is uh, alpha 1,6 uh, glycosidic linkages. Fair is if you consider about the amylose, there is no alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage. That means there is no branching point 
in case of MI lows. In this figure, you can see this is a reducing sugar, reducing end, reducing end of the MI lows. And in this uh, in case of MI low pectin, this point, the black circle is representing the reducing end of MI low pectin. So both the cases, MI lows and MI low pectin, uh, there will be presence of reducing end. In the last few decades, there has been a shift from the acid hydrolysis of starch to the use of starch converting enzymes because of few disadvantages present in acid hydrolysis process. As for example, acid hydrolysis requires the use of corrosion resistant materials, need more energy for heating and is relatively difficult to control. There are mainly four groups of starch converting enzymes, namely endoamylases, exoamylases, debranching enzymes, and transferases. Endoamylases means from the name you can understand. Endo means internal bond breaking enzyme. That means it cleave and they cleave internal alpha 1,4 glycoside linkages resulting in alpha anomeric products whereas exo amylases cleave both alpha 1,4 or alpha 1,6 bonds of the external glucose residues resulting in alpha or beta anomeric products. Debranching enzymes means they hydrolyze alpha 1,6 bonds, 1,6 alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds exclusively leaving long linear polysaccharides whereas transferases cleave alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond of the donor molecule and transfer part of the donor to a glycosidic acceptor forming a new glycosidic bond. So in case of transferase new glycosidic bond formation occurs breaking the old alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Different starch converting enzymes differ from each other in source, nature of substrate, bond specificity and in the end product of hydrolysis. Example of endoamylase is alpha amylase. In that case, substrates of alpha amylase are starch and polysaccharides. They hydrolyze alpha 1,4 glycosided linkage. In products are oligosaccharides with varying length with an alpha configuration and alpha limit dextrins. Examples of exoamylases are beta amylase, amyloglucosidase or glucoamylase and alpha glucosidase. Beta amylase in that case, substrates are starch and polysaccharides like alpha amylase. They can hydrolyze, similar to alpha amylase, uh, they can hydrolyze alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. But in products, uh, in product is beta D maltose. In case of amyloglucosidase, substrates are starch and polysaccharides, but they hydrolyze both alpha 1,4 or alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkages and they produce beta D glucose. Alpha glucosidase acts on oligosaccharides. They can hydrolyze alpha 1,4 or alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkages, but they produce alpha D glucose as the end product. Debranching enzyme means isoamylase and pololanase. Substrate of isoamylase is amylopectin. Isoamylase can hydrolyze one alpha 1,6 glycosidic linkage and in that case end products are polysaccharides. Pololanase also um, acts on alpha 1,6 bond and in products are polysaccharides, but they, uh, they act on pololan and amylopectin. Transferases 
are amylomaltases, uh, amylomaltase and cyclodextrin glycosyl transferases. In case of amylomaltase, substrate is polysaccharides. They can hydrolyze alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage producing oligosaccharides as the, as the end products. Cyclodextrin glycosyl transferase means in that case substrates are polysaccharides. They can also hydrolyze alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkase. End products are alpha, beta and gamma cyclodextrin. Let's focus on applications of starch converting enzymes or amylolytic enzymes. They are used in different food materials or it can be used for several non-food materials. If you consider about the application of this enzyme in food industry, they are actually used for the production of cyclodextrins, maltodextrins, glucose or high fructose corn syrups and crystalline sugar. They are used in baking industry, animal and vegetable food making industry, juice and wine industry. If you consider about non-food material application, they are actually used in paper industry, detergent industry, textile industry, pharmaceutical industry, in waste management and it is used for the biofuel production. This figure is showing the application of various starch converting enzymes in food industry for the production of cyclodextrins, maltodextrins, glucose, fructose syrups and crystalline sugar. Gelatinization and liquefaction and saccharification, these are the major steps involved in this process. Thermostable bacterial alpha amylase is involved for the formation of dextrin from starch slurry during the liquefaction process. Thermostable cyclodextrin glycosyl transferase enzyme is involved for the production of cyclodextrins from starch slurry. Maltose and maltotriose are produced by the action of fungal alpha amylase. Glucoamylase or pololinase enzymes are involved for the production of glucose or high glucose syrup. Maltose or high maltose syrup, they are also produced by the action of beta amylase and pololinase. Fructose, uh, fructose syrup is produced by the action of glucose isomerase. Crystallization process is involved for the production of crystalline sugar from glucose molecules. Let's know what are the major steps involved in bioethanol production by the action of starch converting enzymes. First step is pretreatments and milling of starch containing materials. Starch containing materials means uh, mainly from uh, corn, cassava, sweet potato or starch industry waste. Then water is added to make starch slurry. Thermostable bacterial alpha amylase is applied for the gelatination and liquefaction process. Then fungal alpha amylase and glucoamylase enzymes are utilized for the sacrification process that means for the production of sugar molecules from starch molecules. Then uh, fermentation process is carried out by the um, action um, by using yeast, mainly Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This microorganism converts sugar to ethanol in uh, anaerobic condition. After that, uh, distillation process is carried out in order to collect the bioethanol. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. Kindly like, share and subscribe to the channel.